Okay, after coach, we're going to have Daron Sharp, Kerwin Walton, and Leaky Black. Isaac Shade. Coach, congrats on the win. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank uh, you. Coming into the game, you guys had 18 turnovers in four of the last five games and four before the under-16 timeout today, uh, but then only had four more the rest of the game for a season-low eight. What did it mean to hang on to the ball? Well, it was probably the two biggest factors in the game that we didn't turn the ball over like we had been doing. And as you said, I thought we had five about that first six or eight minutes. But uh, And then the second thing is our job on the backboards and second chance points for us. But uh, uh, it's easy to do, I guess. I just threatened them how much we were going to run if we kept turning the ball over. So it's pretty easy to figure out. Thanks. They'll tell you I'm not joking. That's the truth. <laughs> C.L. Brown. Hey, Coach. Uh, with Kerwin, obviously he brings shooting to the lineup, but what what areas did he have to improve in the most to be able to be in a position to help you guys, like to be on the court enough to help you mm -hmm. like he did today? Well, I think the biggest thing is he's trying to get better on the defensive end of the floor, and he's trying to do that every day. I've been telling him for a couple of weeks that he's getting a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better. Uh, the defense performance that we had in Raleigh against North Carolina State necessitated changing some things, and we were struggling putting the ball in the basket. And I think that uh, Kerwin and Puff and Andrew, all three of those guys, do some good things shooting the ball. So we've gotten each of the three of a little more uh, playing time, even though Andrew played uh, probably the best defensive game, or at least the top two defensive games against North Carolina State. But uh, there's a lot of things going on out there. And you know, we got to lose ourselves into the team. Got to lose yourself into the game. And we do have. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm comfortable playing ten guys. I really am. But I'd be a heck of a lot more comfortable if all ten of them played well. And uh, but Kerwin to answer the question. He's getting a little bit better and a little bit better defensively. He doesn't take bad shots. And probably, and I've told him this. I recruited him because of his shooting ability. I'd like him to shoot a little bit more. But he's doing a great job of not taking bad shots. Thanks, coach. Uh, Brett Friedlander, you're next. Yeah, Roy, I know you like to say things always look better when the ball goes in the basket, but uh, how much better do things look uh, with a, with an ACC win to kind of get you off the snide there? I think that was good, you know, and to think about it, guys, some of you old-timers remember, and if not, you remember me saying it, but my first year as an assistant coach here, uh, we won five games where the other team had the last shot to win five times and missed all five. Last year, I think we had six games that the other team made the last shot to win the game. So the difference between winning and losing is so, so slight. And, you know, we made it, Leakey made a great drive to the basket and uh, uh, scored. And then we got a stop on the other end. Uh, you know, last year that ball kept going in. So I'm hopeful that it'll even out more, even out last year. But uh, uh, it's a good feeling right now. There's no question. Uh, the kids feel good about what they did. And, and we made a couple of big, big, dumb, dumb, dumb mistakes down the stretch. One of our turnovers was like a minute and a half to go. And you can't turn the ball over in the last four minutes. And we had some uh, bad communication on a couple of switches against Nate. And Nate was fantastic. I tried to recruit him very, very hard. And uh, uh, he's seven for 11 from three-point line. That's impressive to be 6'9 or 6'10". And then could you uh, address uh, Dayron and the way he took the game over in the second half and, and, and really led that comeback? Well, he did. He, he played very well. He's very active. He's a load around the basket. And I'm stunned that I look and he only had nine rebounds. I thought he had 15. Uh, but I did tell him I don't need him to be nine for 19. Uh, I think he's good enough to be efficient and go nine for 12 or nine for 13. But uh, – he was a man in there, and they got in a little foul trouble. Juwan got fouls early, and, you know, without uh, Wirtz, that's another guy that's a player for them. Uh, their, their numbers weren't very good. Michael's been very unlucky. Uh, I think a couple of years ago he lost uh, Bonzi and a couple of other guys. They've had some injury factors over the years, but uh, Lefeski almost shot us out, and then Hub was really big in the second half. Thank you, Ryan. Congratulations. Thank you. Jeremiah. Oh, yes. Once again, congratulations on the win, Coach. Um, of course, the last couple of games, there have been some slight lineup changes. So I just wanted to ask you, what is the strategy when making these changes and what differences or maybe even similarities have you seen uh, since mixing it up a little bit? Oh, I don't know. You know, if you're losing and we lost uh, at North Carolina State and I did not think we played well, State kicked our butts in every way. So I wanted to do something. Uh, 
so we made the change. I wasn't going to just do it for one game, and then it's no big deal, but uh, uh, <laughs> it's almost funny. Now, RJ was about, what would you guys say, 35 seconds? 35 seconds late coming into the locker room before the game, so I took him out of the starting lineup and put in Caleb, and then I told him a lie. I uh, said, Michael Jordan was never freaking late. And then before the game started, I remembered that Michael was late in New York one time. I'll get cursed to look it up. But uh, he got caught in traffic, and we didn't start him that night either. So I told RJ, now I'm comparing you to Michael Jordan. That's a pretty good place to be. But uh, uh, so that was the other one that would not have changed. If RJ hadn't been late, he would have stayed at the point guard as well. But things happen, and as a coach, you know, the end of the possession there at the end, I wanted to uh, get uh, Andrew in for Kerwin. I probably would have gone small if they had had uh, Derwin out of the game. Uh, but Juwan was still in the game, so we played two big guys, and we were fortunate at the end. Uh, Mike yeah, Cooper? I'm sorry. Can I ask uh, one more quick uh, follow-up? Um, I noticed that Walton and Sharp have increased their scoring since they have been put in the starting lineup. So can you talk just specifically about those two and what you noticed from them in this role? Who did you say which two? Um, Kerwin. Did Ron and Kerwin? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's – it's. Uh, think about this. In the game we played against Georgia Tech, the three guys that did not start, Garrison, uh, Leakey, and uh, Caleb. Leak was on out right, and I told you guys. they Those three played the most minutes. So it's not just who starts. Think that. The three guys that I didn't start played more minutes than the other guys. So what I like to say is that when you're given opportunities, take advantage of those opportunities. Kerwin is playing about 12, 14 minutes a, a game until the last three games, and he's played more because we do need somebody else that can put the ball in the basket. And uh, they're loading up on him. I mean, everybody on the other team, their staff screaming, shooter, shooter, shooter. And that's where he's doing such a great job of not taking bad shots. We can help him out more by recognizing that we got him getting more shots. All right, thank you. We got time for about two more, and then the players are going to come in. So uh, Mike Toper and then Kip Coombs will go last. Hey, Coach, good to see you. Um, listen, I know you want to work inside out, but uh, after the last couple games, Andrew and Leakey kind of made it clear that they were not happy about how you guys were feeding or how they were feeding the big men. What did you make of your post play today? And obviously, Dayron played well, but just how they were feeding the ball to your bigger guys. Well, I don't know what you're talking about, Andrew and Leakey not being happy by me saying I'm throw the ball in the post because, frankly, my dear, I don't care what the hell they think. But I'll talk to them, and I don't think that they're going to say that they were unhappy about throwing the ball to Dayron or Armando or Garrison. And I've I've got Leakey in the room. Leakey, am I misrepresenting you? Not at all. So it, it understand that. What's that? I apologize, Coach. It was after the, uh, the Georgia Tech game, though. Okay, it's after the Georgia Tech game. They're still not going to complain about throwing the ball into the post. They're not dumb. I've, I apologize. Not, they, they weren't complaining that they had to. They just thought that they weren't doing it enough. Okay, we're all right, because I was getting ready to tell y'all to no, 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 go back no. to fucking first grade and read your dadgum notes or something. Okay. No, they should throw the ball inside. Armando's shooting 74%. Uh, Garrison's shooting 47 Day Dayron was shooting 57%. Uh, Walker Kess were shooting 60. Uh, my guys aren't dumb. They may make a mistake or something, but they're not dumb. But I don't know what your question was, but I'll tell you that Leakey stunk it up the next to last defensive possession, took his eye off the ball, and his guy laid it up. And in the huddle, I said, all right, you made a bad play. Now make a great one. Is that right, Leak? All right, so you can ask him about the great play he made driving the ball to the basket. Is that it, guys? Last, or you got one last, more? Last one, Kip. Okay. Yeah, Roy, thank you. Uh, the last defensive possession, it looked like you wanted to overplay to keep the ball away from Hub and also away from Lashevsky. Fair, uh, fair estimate? Well, you think about it, our most experienced defensive players in the game were Leakey and Garrison, and they're our two best defensive players. That doesn't mean they play the best every possession, uh, but they're our two best defensive players, and Leakey had Hub and Garrison had Lefesky. And I think that what we tried to do is get them to spend some time in the backcourt so they didn't rush it down and have a few more seconds. And we almost made a nice play on the full court defense kind of thing. But uh, uh, again, those two guys, and we had Andrew in, another experienced guy. Dayron slides his feet really well. And who else did I have in the game? RJ, okay. So I, th I think we just tried to make them use some time in the backcourt. And again, we had our two most experienced players uh, guarding their two scores.
right, thank you. Thanks, Gus. Right, <laughs> Questions for Leaky. Uh, Greg Hall, you're first. Greg Hello. Hall, you're first. Sorry, I was mute. Yeah, mute. Yeah, he was on mute. Hey, Leaky, can you uh, take us through that last offensive possession? It looked like there was a play drawn up to get Kerwin at the top of the key, but then he wasn't open, and then it looked like you just had to you had to drive to the basket there. Can you take us through that possession? Uh, I'm not sure what the play call was, but I'm pretty sure we were trying to get uh, Kerwin the ball. I think the play broke down, and I think I had the ball pretty high on the top of the key, and uh, I just seen the, the baseline. So, I mean, the play before, I felt like I got fouled, but – I felt like I went soft, so I was kind of in my head about it. So I made sure the next time I drove, I was going to go pretty strong. So that's what I did. Then how does it feel to close out a, a close game like this uh, with a W instead of an L? Uh, it feels good. You know, going through it like seven times last year, you know, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth. So it felt good to finally get one. All right. Uh, we're going to try uh, – no, no follow-ups going forward here. Sorry. Um, we're trying to get everybody quickly through here. Uh, next up, Mike Topper. Leaky, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up, brother. Uh, first of all, congrats on the win. What sure. I would like to ask you when I was trying to ask Coach is that after the last game at Tech, you had commented how you guys felt like you weren't doing a good job or weren't getting the ball to your big guys enough. Today, right. that was very much evident that you were. What did you make of the the post play and uh, and just how your big guys, obviously, day round played great? Right. Um, I mean, I feel like every game we try to emphasize giving them guys the ball. You see, they're pretty good. I'm not sure how many points De'Ron had, but I'm pretty sure he had a lot. Um, but we try to feed him the ball pretty much every time down in the post, no matter who's in the game, him, G, Walt Kess, whoever it is. And I felt like today it was just much easier to get them the ball because we were making shots. So that opens the floor up. And it was just giving them the ability to go to work down low. Hunter? Hey, Leaky, congratulations on the win. So today, Dayron had 25 points, was actually the first 20-point scorer for a few guys all season. What are some things that you see behind the scenes that he provides as far as energy? And uh, I think, what, do you, what does he do in practice that really makes him stand out with the way he plays? He just plays hard 24-7. You know, some days he comes in beat up. You see how hard he plays. There's no way he's not beat up. But it's just every single day, you know, his motor is just on another level. And I feel like that's what's going to take him over top. So... He's a big time player for us. Okay, last one for Leaky CL. Hey, Leaky. Uh, Roy just said that he felt like Kerwin maybe could take more shots than he does. Um, right. I was wondering what you, as, as a veteran guy on the team, uh, I, I know you've seen that look in his eye because it, it comes across sometimes in his play that maybe he's a little hesitant sometimes to pull the trigger. Uh, right. How do you kind of? you know, boost his, I don't know if it's a lack of confidence or what, or, or his just self-assuredness to that it's okay for him to take those shots and to, to make himself, you know, a, a player in the, in the game. Um, I mean, it's no lack of confidence. I just try to tell him to keep shooting. You know, we see, uh, see the reps he puts in day in, day out, you know, since the summertime I Remember one day he probably made like, I think like 75 straight from one spot. So he could shoot the ball. We all know he can shoot the ball. Is this, him being a freshman, I feel like he doesn't really know what's a good shot. I feel like he knows what's a good shot for him, but like for our team, we feel like once we get him open, we don't want him to shoot the ball. Like it's a matter of him getting his feet wet. Thanks. Thanks, Leakey. All right. Thanks, Leakey. Kerwin, you're up. Questions for Kerwin. <laughs> Kerwin in here? Go ahead, Dayron. Kerwin in you. Huh? Kerwin in you. All right. Here's Dayron. Oh, I'm sorry. Question for Dayron, not Kerwin. I'm sorry. Uh, Greg, Paul. Dayron, what changed for you in the second half? Uh, it just seemed that you had a different motor uh, motor there as you kind of took over the game offensively and defensively with, with a couple steals. Um, nothing really changed. You know, like y'all was saying, like the guards were saying I need to get the ball in the post more. They were just feeding me. And I just had opportunity to score the ball. Uh, Royal Howell. Dayron, can you speak on your motor throughout the entire game, including you making a 6-0 run by yourself, putting the heels up by one? It just seems like you were just relentless in the paint. You were calling for the ball, and they just couldn't stop you flat out. Can you speak on just the victory tonight? Um, 
I kind of pride myself on my motor, you know. I'm kind of like a guy that plays hard every position, 24-7, no matter, like, what I'm doing, pick up in games, backyard, playing against my mom or something like that. I'm going to play hard 24-7. And, like, and like the night we just – we had we was 0-2 in HTC, and we just wanted to win. So, we play – everybody played hard and was zoned in for this for the W. Brent Friedlander. Yeah, picking up on that same theme, um, that 6-0 run where you kind of brought the team back and, and kind of took over, is that something that you just kind of were motivated to do or was that something that was just there or did coach just call plays for you? How, how did that come down? Um, I just ran I just ran to the front of the room and posted up and I was kind of hot, so I, and they couldn't they couldn't stop me from scoring, so I just kept going up, you know. Uh, last one, Jeremiah Holloway. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's been pretty clear that you have a very high motor and you've brought the energy um, really throughout this entire season. I wanted to ask you, since the lineup has been changed a little bit the last couple of games, what's been or has there been any differences for you between bringing that energy to the team from the opening tip and just bringing that um, coming off the bench several minutes into the game? What's been some of the similarities and differences for you? Uh, I feel like nothing's different, you know. If I come off the bench or I start, I'm going to bring the same energy, have my same mentality and the same motor. I just want us to win. Thank you, Dayron. Dayron, thank you very much. No problem. Kerwin, you're up. Uh, question for Kerwin Walton. Isaac Shade, you are first. Hey, Kerwin, congratulations on the victory. Uh, I know we're going to yeah. talk a lot about your three-point shooting, but what, one of the things I've noticed is in these two games that you've started, you have seven assists and just two turnovers. So how are you balancing looking for your teammates and when to hunt your own shot? Well, I'm just playing basketball. I'm just looking you know, for the right looks and looking for everybody else, just trying to see the bigger picture. That's what my uh, coach always keeps trying to tell me. Um, I'm just yeah, just trying to look and see what you know how they're playing me and just how everything just unfolded. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, Curran, this is this is total nonsensical question here, but I was wondering um, if you had met Theo Penson before. If uh, I, I know during the pandemic it was kind of different for the summer in Chapel Hill, but um, because I, because specifically after during the Kentucky game, when you made those threes in the second half, he tweeted out something like muffin top. Uh, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering if you had any interactions with him before personally and, and what you think of muffin top. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I met him, I met him before. Uh, I mean, he, I remember he played uh, against us in practice and that's the first time I actually seen him play and the first time I met him. But yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I heard it before. So it's just, I mean, it's just hilarious to me, but. You know, I love it, though. Jeremiah Holloway? Uh, yeah, so just getting back to your shooting a little bit, um, this is the third time in the last four games that you've made at least three three-pointers. That's both starting and coming off the bench. I want to ask you, um, what do you believe has been different um, in these last few games in comparison to the uh, very beginning of the season? Well, I just feel like I'm a lot more aggressive. I'm starting to feel a lot more comfortable just in being in the system and the way coach runs things. So I'm kind of like understanding like the good spot that's different spots I can be in the offense and how I can get myself as many looks as I, uh, many good looks as I can. So that's just my main focus is just trying to get as many good shots up and just focus on just uh, doing my job and making shots. Ross Martin. Hey, Kerwin, I was wondering, uh, I mean, did you think you'd be starting this early in your UNC career and contributing as much as you are in terms of your shooting and, and offensive performances? Um, I, I never knew, you know, it was kind of like a huge mystery to me. I know I had a great chance of playing, but my main focus was just trying to get better every day, just getting better every day, defensively, making sure my shot stays sharp, uh, just getting better on offense and just being, being able to know every single different play and all the different looks we can get and just trying to make everybody else better. That's just my main focus, just trying to get better as the season goes on. Anybody else got anything? Yeah, I, mean, I, I can follow up here, uh, Matt. Uh, what areas do you think you really need to work on? What areas on uh, defense or anything else do you think you can really improve on? Uh, well, I want to definitely get better at off-ball defense. That's definitely something I feel like I can get a lot more steals um, by reading different passes and just being in the right spots. That's like the main focus on and just being able to read what's going to happen next and anticipate. 
Thank you. Thank you, Kerwin. Thanks, everybody. Since there's no more questions, everybody have a good night. Thanks, Thank Matt. you, Matt. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks, Matt.